Greater Hope campaign is transforming our campus in remarkable and visible ways. Over the next few years, you will see new infrastructure and beautiful new buildings emerge that will serve Hope College students well for generations to come. What you might not see is the impact that this campaign is having today in the lives of our students and faculty. Through scholarships, through research funds, through endowed professorships that allow us to retain the best available talent, the campaign is making Hope College a stronger institution and allowing us to keep our promise of being an academic institution second to none. We thank you for your participation in the campaign and for your commitment to Hope College. We'd now like to share with you a few examples of just how this campaign is transforming the lives of our students so that they in turn may transform the world. Sometimes we'll get a call from the advancement office saying we've been made aware of the needs of a scholarship recipient, a potential scholarship recipient. Uh, we'll sit down, we'll process, we'll try and understand the situation they face and automatically uh, some relationships and friendships emerge. We had MKs into our Inter our cross-cultural class at the seminary that we were teaching. We had Hope College MKs and one of them said, um, I love Hope College but I'm leaving because of financial reasons. And I went home that night and said to Vern, we can't let that happen. There are a lot of difficulties in applying to colleges and coming to the U.S. for college because uh, well, there's a whole host of reasons. The, fir uh, the first and obvious one is finances. My parents are pastors uh, who are in a mission field, and that often means they don't have the finances. So um, in the words of my mom and dad who sat me down uh, sophomore year in high school, you're going to college, but you're going to figure out how to pay for it. Good luck. Having third culture kids, or MKs on campus, can only make hope a stronger experience for everyone. Um, diversity is a nice word, but in reality, this kind of um, experience benefits everyone. And we really felt that by starting the scholarship program, we could make hope a better institution than it was before we began. This country itself has become a multicultural world and we need to prepare students to be able to know how to meet the needs of other people in a culturally acceptable way. So we know Hope College. We know what Hope College has to offer. And we're so excited when these students come here and they too can experience the uniqueness and the goodness of a Hope College education. If I was to cap kind of capture my experience here at Hope, uh, I often like the word, uh, phrase that St. Anselm of Canterbury uh, coined, which was faith-seeking understanding. And that's been my experience here at Hope, is faith-seeking understanding. Both Carla and I went to Hope College, so we love Hope College and know the effect that it had on us. And now we can see that happening to other children of missionaries who otherwise wouldn't maybe have been able to attend Hope College. Giving to the scholarship for the children of missionaries is an act of faith. As an act of faith, many of these donors take a step into the unknown, making real financial sacrifices for people they really don't know. I have only the deepest gratitude and thanks for those who have taken that unknown step in order for me to have this opportunity here at Hope. Thank you. The Verhey Fund is, is a great fit for our department because it's broadly defined. It is to support students doing summer research with faculty in the earth sciences. This fits our department perfectly because we are a very interdisciplinary department. We have research students who are chemistry majors, biology majors, engineering majors, and geology majors. So it's really a tailor-made resource for this department and what we're trying to accomplish with students in cooperative faculty-student research. 
This summer I was working with Dr. Peterson, who is technically a geology professor. Um, we also worked really closely with Dr. Seymour, who was actually my general chemistry professor, and he's part of the chem department. So working you know, one-on-one -on -one with professors of two different departments, um, we'd use a lot of vials from the chemistry stock room, and then we'd go borrow the workshop of the environmental science classroom. Uh, we had one calculation, we had a biology professor check over. So really just being in the same building, just a couple doors down, really helped just to you know, pursue the science, not necessarily these departmental boundaries. Collaborative faculty-student research is extremely valuable for many reasons. One reason is that it enables the students to experience interdisciplinary problem solving, which they will experience when they enter the workforce. It allows them to see that the big problems are not solved by one discipline or one approach, but we really need the team effort, people bringing their specialties to the table to solve the problems. I think this is a great investment for our students' futures. It's a great investment for society. I like to tell my students, this is the real world, and it starts right here at home. So for 40 hours a week, I was in this lab um, working close with Dr. Peterson and my partner, Alex. And it was kind of dealing with clay interactions with this one compound that we think may be ultimately harmful in the environment. Um, it was called triclosan. Which is an antimicrobial compound used in hand soaps. And the other is a penicillin-based antibiotic called ampicillin. What we were looking at is how do these interact with soil clays and the goal is to see if they're transported easily in the soil. I didn't really know what was going to happen when I said I'm going to do research. Like what does that even mean? But you know since being in a lab 40 hours a week, 8 hours a day, um, I just feel so much more comfortable in this environment and just experienced. Uh, this semester I'm taking a five-hour chemistry lab and that's like nothing to me now. That's not even a full day of work. Uh, I understand, we understand in this department that donors have choices uh, for the things that they support and the things they believe in. I want to say that we're so grateful that we have this kind of support because the impact it can make is direct. It makes an impact in students' lives. It's making an impact in Andrew's life. And this is so relevant. And the rewards are going to be big and they're going to press on into the future. Hope has such a great reputation in the sciences um, and collaborative research is such a fundamental part of it. The fact that alumni, uh, friends of the college, all donors can contribute to this and make my experience that much better, I can't say thank you enough. The Watts Learning Center is a charter school uh, started by two people that I profoundly respect, uh, Gene Fisher and Sandra Fisher, his wife. They started it in 1997 uh, when residents of Watts uh, were very unhappy with the uh, achievement of their students. And now it is 500 students in the elementary school and 300 in the middle school. And uh, I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to connect uh, Hope College uh, with its intentions to the school with their intentions and uh, to train uh, some of our students uh, in, in that effort. For a number of years, I had envisioned that we might be able to have an urban experience available for our students. Daryl Fregardis came in January several years ago to meet with me and laid out a vision that matched what I had been thinking about really quite perfectly. My hope for the students in the May term was that they would sincerely feel what it's like to be in Watts, uh, that they would be able to relate to, learn to relate to, uh, be with the students so that they would come away uh, with an understanding of what it's like to teach uh, in a multicultural uh, setting. 
I was nervous going into Watts because of everything that people around me had been saying. When I went back home for a week, um, everyone was saying, oh, that's the place where the riots were, like, be careful and all this stuff. Um, but going into it, I didn't feel scared and it was more of nervous for the teaching experience, not for the community. I think all of the students who participated in the Hope Comes to Watts May term went out with the expectation of growing. And I think probably most of them went out primarily with the expectation of growing academically, educationally, in terms of their skills and their knowledge of working with children from this setting. But it was really important what happened in terms of their own spiritual development. They became so immersed in the lives of these students that they were working with that it really, I think, brought their spiritual growth to a new level. I got to have some really good conversations with students and learn about their family life and their background and just the area that they're coming from changes how they approach school. And they are dedicated students but in a different um, approach and different way than we may see. They have a desire to learn but it is kind of... Um, distracted by everything else that they face at home. The support of the donors is going to provide the students with such a unique opportunity in an urban setting where they can grow academically and emotionally and spiritually. And we need to have that type of support to make sure that this program not only goes on for this year, but for years to come. Thank you for your support financially because this program wouldn't be possible without your support and the relationships that were formed with the mentor teachers and students and our peers were really invaluable and will definitely impact the rest of our careers. I think Hope College overall is just wanting to see uh, people united uh, united in Christ and united in purpose and uh, to be uh, dedicated to care and love others and that's where I see myself and try to share it.